uh, the pulse represents the character in a, in a certain way, the character of the composer, in a subtle way, very subtle way. And for different pieces, you adjust it a little bit. I'll show you how you can, in this case, the Mozart pulse. I'll show you with this slider how you can adjust the pattern, you see? They all move up and down together. This is the time. The, this, the time is seen here. 108, 94, 105, 95. So that is a Mozart timing uh, deviation from 100. If they were 100, they would be even. But you don't play them evenly. If you do, you could buy Mozart. See? <coughs> now, uh, that isn't taught. Uh, I know my conservatory days at Juilliard, huh? but some students learning the C minor piano concerto, for example, slow movement, the tom, pom, pa, da, di, tom, di, da, da. And then it goes tom, pom, 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 pa, di. Uh, and the student has to play evenly. The teacher says, pom, 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 pa. And try to play it really evenly. The poor student does da, 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 da. And he can't do it really well, because it always sounds awful. <coughs> and so, you know, this, the teacher doesn't really, can teach, doesn't know that, that you have to play it unevenly for it to sound well. So it's just dum, bum, 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 ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. So you get first is loudest, then the left louder, just like this pattern here. Dum, bum, bum. First four. Dum, bum, 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 bum. It's easy to do once you think of it as a group. <coughs> and uh, it, it's natural. And it conveys the meaning. But you try to dum, bum, 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 evenly, evenly, each thing, no. And so much bad thinking in music is conducted, unfortunately. And, but <coughs> this is just one of the example here. Now, let's go on. Um, so we have found now all these pulses with different components, adjusted. Each piece has slightly different perspective on it, a little, little bit different, but it's minor changes or second order effects. And uh, another algorithmic function. So, so, so this gets multiplied together, as you see throughout the piece. Even the rests, the rests are very important in music. But the rests are part of the pulse. So some rests are a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, then notation. The notation is only a shorthand. It's a, it's a very inexact replica of the musical thought of the composer. <coughs> so, uh, in terms of the shaping, maybe I'll show you very briefly something here. This is the beginning of the violin. This is just the violin part. You play this here solo. So, um, Now, if I ch the, 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 you see the shape there of this note. Now, if I change this slider, it, all these notes will change in shape like that. And this slider changes the other part of this note, see like this. So you have to adjust this. And uh, now this one is the predictive one. That this, some notes change and others don't. You see that? because it looks ahead and, and it, it changes depending on what the next note is going to be. So the present note is shaped according to what's to follow. So that way it gives it a continuity and a flow. So when the next note is higher, 
it tends to bend the shape forward. The next net is lower, it bends the shape backwards. And so this is done throughout. So every note that follows, it looks ahead. Just like when I'm talking to you, I don't shape each syllable with my mouth. I wouldn't even know how to do that. I couldn't talk to you if I had to control each, my tongue and my mouth and my palate and my breath. I just think of something to say, and the out comes, it flows out. And the way this happens in speech, we've recently done some studies that, that show that this predictive power, that we have predictive amplitude shaping, also uh, does occur in speech in a different, somewhat related way. Namely, that when you put an accent on something, like say accent, the word accent, that the previous syllables before the accent also partake in the potential accent that's going to come in a similar way to how we find in music that that creates a flow. So that creates a flow in, in speech. So that that's a, a very interesting thing. It's very recent, only the last 18 months or so, been working with that aspect of it. <coughs> 